ever since Eric Jones took the 20 from Matt Kenseth back in 2017, he's been on a very short leash. After all, he went into August last season without a contract for the 2020 season. Now, once again, we're here in July and Eric Jones does not know what his future holds for 2021. So with the Michigan natives' recent struggles and Christopher Bell looming large, could Eric Jones be on the hot seat for 2021? This edition of the 2021 Silly Season Speculation is coming up next. So loading up the car and heading to Daytona, there was a lot to be optimistic about for Eric Jones in 2020. Chris Gale and crew had a decent second half for the season, even though it was greatly hindered by yet another round of 16 exit. There was going to be a lot less pressure on Eric Jones. After all, Christopher Bell is now at Levine Family Racing. That was demonstrated during the 2020 Clash as Eric Jones, with a car destined for the Mooresville Dumpster, ended up winning and setting a statement really early in the season. That momentum would not continue as Eric Jones had three finishes outside the top 15 before a COVID-19 world put the NASCAR circuit on hold. So, coming back from this pandemic, Eric Jones was 20th in the NASCAR standings. However, he would not remain there for long as the 20 team was one of the teams to come out strong out of the gate. Two Darlington top 10 finishes and he had a great chance to win the night race until he got into the wall and that hurt his performance a little bit. And then I also look at the Charlotte 600. He had some great speed in that race and I think if there would have been a much longer run and less short sprints, I think he would have had a chance to win the race. I know these numbers aren't very good, but you gotta remember, Joe Gibbs Racing struggled coming back from the pandemic. For once, it felt like he was on par with the big three at Joe Gibbs, and less a teammate to Christopher Bell. But then, guess what? In typical 20 team fashion, they were hit with a heavy dose of reality the next couple weeks. Five races of 20th or worse in the next eight races. And if you want the honest truth, a majority of these outcomes weren't even his goddamn fault. During the Charlotte Kilometer race, the 20 team was caught pitting outside the box. Under NASCAR rules, this isn't serviceable with just a pass through or by restarting at the rear. It is deemed a one lap penalty, which pretty much screwed over his night and any chance of getting a good finish. Getting put in a bad situation at Atlanta with Christopher Bell getting into him and cutting one of his tires. And to add insult to injury, Eric Jones was nabbed for speeding afterwards. Having to check up for Brad Keselowski, only for Tyler Reddick to go full send and pretty much screw you out of a good day before the final stage starts. And then you have Talladega, as Eric Jones probably should have won that race, but then of course Ryan Blaney had to screw him out of that chance by completely body slamming him into the wall, taking a heavy impact and finishing in 5th place. In the process, Eric Jones has faded from 13th to now the cutoff driver to make the NASCAR Cup playoffs. At one point, he was even below the cut line, behind the RCR duo of Tyler Reddick and Austin Dillon. And you guys know, with the insane power of Joe Gibbs Racing and the speed of TRD, this is not the typical climate for a driver from Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, even with this, you would think that Eric Jones would have a likely chance of getting re-signed to JGR, right? After all, with NASCAR going beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, the best thing might be to be a little bit conservative for a year or two. However, there was a concerning quote a couple weeks ago by David Wilson, who is the president of TRD. He stated, We all know Eric is at the end of his current contract. What's the plan there? We don't know. We're working on that. Car owner Gibbs and I are talking about that now every week. Our desire is obviously to keep both of our young men in the company. How we do it is yet to be determined. Now originally when I first heard this, I thought it meant, oh, Eric Jones is definitely out of the 20 next season. However, it just indicates there's a chance that Eric Jones and Christopher Bell could swap rides for the 2021 season. Now, fortunately for Eric Jones, Christopher Bell hasn't set the world on fire. I mean, he's been pretty lackluster so far. But the problem is, Toyota and Joe Gibbs have invested a lot of time and money into Christopher Bell, and they know he's a really great talent behind the wheel. Without question, Joe Gibbs wants to see Christopher Bell in one of his Toyota Camrys in the near future. The problem is, there's no room as you have Denny Hamlin winning races, Martin Truex Jr. winning races, and Kyle Busch is in a bit of a slump, but come on, it's Kyle Busch. There's no way Joe Gibbs is going to screw over a guy who's been the face of the franchise for Christopher Bell, and that is indicated by Kyle Busch's long-term contract he signed last season. 
So guess what? Like it or not, Eric Jones is going to be immediately the first guy that gets questioned every single offseason. And that's why as we're entering July and August, without a question, Eric Jones is on the hot seat. Now, it is rumored he's working on a new contract, but there are still a lot of dominoes left to fall in order for Eric Jones to come back to the team for 2021. Hurdle number one is locking down an extension with Stanley Black & Decker. Through DeWalt, Stanley, Craftsman, and the legendary Irwin Tools, they fund about three quarters of the season from Daytona to Phoenix. They provide a lot of big money so this team can compete at a high level, and they're likely going to need their funding going forward. Now, quite frankly, I can't see a reason why Stanley Black & Decker would want to leave this team. I mean, come on, it's a Joe Gibbs racing team. There aren't very many better rides out there. The only other competitive options would be the 14 at Stuart Haas, or maybe the 88 driven by Alex Bowman at Hendrick Motorsports. Now, even if they lock down Stanley Black & Decker, that means nothing for Eric Jones' future. After all, they decided to move on from Matt Kenseth, a guy that they've sponsored for 15 plus years, a near household name. They disfavored him over Eric Jones just three short years ago. There may be an off chance that they may favor having Christopher Bell in that car over Eric Jones, which could mean a ride swap in this case. The second major domino is definitely the long-term status of Levine Family Racing. Amidst this whole pandemic, owner Bob Levine is quoted saying his team is walking on the tightrope of continuing past 2021. Now, they wouldn't be the first Toyota-affiliated team with Joe Gibbs Racing to fizzle out. Obviously, Joe Gibbs Racing raised the rent for affiliate Furniture Row, effectively putting them out of business once major sponsor 5-Hour Energy left. However, I can say this, Levine Family Racing is no Furniture Row. Really, the only race they could have won in team history was the 2019 Bristol Night Race. Plus, it would be a poor move considering that they want to retain Eric Jones and Christopher Bell in the Toyota camp. So, I think Joe Gibbs Racing is going to work hard to keep JBL, Ream, and Procore with the 95 team to make sure they have another car to keep their prospects in. And then the final thing relies with the performance of Eric Jones. Without a doubt, making the playoffs is an absolute must. He's made it the last two years, and there's been minimal changes with the team from year to year. Now, right now, things are pretty tedious, as there's a pretty steady gap between he and William Byron for 15th place. Now, I'm not saying he can't make it up, but it's going to take some time, and to get consistently good finishes over the next 5 to 10 races to better himself in the standings. Now, of course, in this situation, winning is the best medicine. Getting that checkered flag would relieve him of the stresses of making the playoffs and would make him look more on par with the other teammates. When I look at the second half of the schedule, I think Christopher Bell is going to step up his performance and do a lot better in the 95. You gotta think, he's going to tracks for the second time, and after all, he's really good at Bristol. Could that be his breakout race? So therefore, at the places where Christopher Bell does good, Eric Jones just has to do better. In terms of the races where Eric Jones can finally break through, I look at Texas where he finished top 10 in both races last season. You've got two races at Kansas where he's done really well, and remember, that was where he had his phenomenal debut before unfortunately he wrecked out. And then you've got a really good round of 16 to start the playoffs with Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol. If he makes the playoffs, that could be a great statement right there. Those three races could be his breakout stretch if he can get a win, make the playoffs, and maybe win two of those three races. Without a doubt, the best way to get off of the hot seat is to win, win, and win some more. Now, if Eric Jones does get a contract with Joe Gibbs Racing, I'd expect it to be another one-year deal. I just can't see Coach Joe making a long-term commitment unless, like I said, he completely breaks through and starts winning races left and right. But of course, all of that could change for good or for bad. Man, that'd be a horrible look if Eric Jones got screwed like Matt Kenseth and Daniel Suarez is, but I wouldn't be surprised after all this is Joe Gibbs Racing. Let's just hope he can remain in a competitive ride because he has the talent and he just needs the time to develop. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive.